Right guys, I'm here with Jen Kite. Now, if, if anyone doesn't understand who that is, watch her. this is Miss Australia. <laughs> She's a journalist, she knew, reads news. But really what I want to ask, like, I don't trust journalists. Never trusted journalists as a kid growing up. How can I not trust Jen? I've heard too much about Jen. The CEO, the founder of We Are Eight has told me so much about you. So I want you to tell me something that no one knows about you, please, just to kick this off. Oh boy, I've just <laughs> met you. <laughs> and you want me to I've got to in re the reveal. deep end immediately. <laughs> um, you should be a journalist. <laughs> From a journalist, tell you something. Okay, okay. I always wanted to be a singer. Oh, did you? Yeah, yeah. Uh, who would you have modelled yourself on? Oh, Chrissy Hind. Oh, nice. Oh, yes. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So, what yeah. stopped you? Um, my uncle was a beautiful singer. He was an opera singer, but I wanted to be like a Chrissy Hind type performer, and I like to sing, mm -hmm. um, but I'm not the best singer. And what I fell in love with was writing words. Oh wow! Yep, yep, communicating. Mm. So I realised that was my passion. So mm. while expression was one thing, and doing it through music or song, it was actually. I thought it was writing, but it was actually speaking, it was communicating, and that's mm. what I ended up doing. So do you write, when you're on TV and we see you on TV? Not anymore, I get other people to do that. Oh, I oh, say so you've, got, you've got runners now, you've got runners doing that type of stuff. <laughs> no, 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 we're all very territorial, so I have been a reporter for many, many years, mm. uh, and then a presenter reporter, and now these days I'm mostly just the anchor. Mm. So I do rewrite some scripts. Um, I can write some updates and I'll do some feature pieces. Mm. But most of the time, day to day, my main job is communicating. Mm. Yeah. It's crazy when you, when you look at the news and you, you watch it nowadays, especially more than ever, and I watch it and I sit there and think, is there anything positive going to come out of this news? Do you ever feel like that when you're actually yeah. there and you're the anchor holding it all together? Yeah, of course, of course. When I take a holiday, I don't watch the news mm -hmm. because it's depressing. Yeah, it's a downer. Yeah. Most of it is depressing. I understand that, especially when I come back to work and I think, oh my goodness, here I go again. And it, it's heavy. And mm. But life is heavy. And I think for a lot of people, it is difficult. And life can be really, really challenging. And I think my job as a communicator is to try and alleviate some of that fear, that anxiety. Mm. So when bad things are happening, I try to do it in a way that it's not the end of the world. You mm. know, you want to offer some hope. Yeah, so yeah. that's what I hope to bring to it anyway. I, I always think that, I was taught from a, a previous manager that I had that sometimes that the lows are never as, as deep and as low as, you, as they seem. Yeah. And don't allow the highs to be too crazy out and find a balance in life. How do you then balance yourself outside of your work? Humour. That's the best. I love humour. I love comedy. I love. You've got to ha you've got to have a laugh, mm. and you have to keep some lightness in your life. So, especially working in news, um, you have to have friends you laugh with, mm -hmm. like your CEO. Yeah, Sue. Shout out Sue. <laughs> like Tennessee. my friend Sue. <laughs> <laughs> what do they say? Laughter is the best medicine. It is, and yeah. it's true. And you know what? When my kids go through a tough time, I say keep it light. Mm. Don't overthink it. Stop going to the dark side. Come back into the light. Try to keep it light sometimes because we do get drawn into some dark stuff and we can actually choose to say, let that go. Mm. Come back to some middle ground and get support from friends and people you love to be strong and deal with stuff. Mm. So who do you lean on? Your, your kids are there and you're there for your children. Who do you lean on when you, you're oh, in time of need? The sisterhood. Yeah. My girlfriends and oh, my good. family. I'm, mm. I love my family. I have an amazing family and I have a really great core group of friends. So in, in, in that, what's the best piece of advice that you've been given, either growing up or in your adult life now, that's actually, actually had a good, real positive impact in your life going forward past that moment? I think probably my mother was my main inspiration. She was tough but she was, she was probably a perfectionist. I'm not a perfectionist. <laughs> but she, her motto was, if you're going to do a job, do it well. Mm. So I guess the rule I live by is, do your best. Mm. Do your best. 
but be realistic about what that is, you mm. know. Don't think you should be doing more if, if that's your best. That, that's, that's my problem with social media and why I think social media has been broken for a while, mm. is that social media gives you an unrealistic target in life a lot of the times, whether it's from looks, how you should be shaped, how your body is, uh, and a lot of the time it's, uh, you think, wow, how have they got to this, like they've got a great car, they're always on holiday, they always look perfect. And it's now, it's being able to kind of take that back and go, no, 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 actually, you can be normal, you can be a sort of, that's why we are it's quite really yeah. important for that fact. Yeah. So, so in terms of photos, are you one of those that sits there and say, I have to take 10 photos to get the right <laughs> one, or? No, 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 no. <laughs> I've been doing this way too long. No, I can imagine. <laughs> and also, I think, if you're grounded mm. and you have a great support network, if you have a solid family, if you have real friends, and I mean real friends, you know, through highs and lows, you don't have to pretend. Mm. You don't have to pretend on social media, really. We, we all need to be real. Mm. And then when you, when you are real, you feel happier. So you mentioned those things where people sh should go and talk to people, talk to friends, family, their network, etc. What if there's people out there that don't have that? Where do they go? Well, I think there, there are always services you can go to. Mm. Um, and I know in news that, you know, we do do some pretty heavy stories and we're always offering, you know, numbers to call, people to call. Um, but I also think it's up to people who it's up to all of us to check in on people too, mm. whether it's neighbours, whether it's friends. You know, I think it's our responsibility to care about each other. I think it's really important. That's why I love We Are Eight. Mm. I think it's, it's really important to think of others and make an effort for others and to just look out for everybody. Mm. That sense of community, like, it's, it's, I think it's kind of gone from society a little bit. Not gone completely, but from large parts of society, I feel that the community isn't as close knit as it once was because we've got all of these things at our, ha our fingertips, social media and phones, etc. Would you agree? The flip side of that for me is: Did you go and see the queues for the Queen? Crazy, yeah. Did you go to Green Park and see the flowers? I didn't go to Green Park, but I saw I saw it all on TV. I walked through Green Park and I can't describe the atmosphere. It was mm. love. Mm. It was just pure love and there were thousands of people. And I, I spoke to lots of people and they just let it go. It mm. was beautiful. And that sense of unity gives me hope. So I'm an optimist. Mm. And the cues for the Queen, they would have gone for months if you would let it. And that's the goodness in people. So I believe that people are inherently good. And the social media vanity, the narcissism, that's an ugly facade. But I really do believe deep down, people are good. And in news, I know that to be true because when we have a, a crisis, say the bushfires in Australia, which in my state, 174 people were killed. In news, we were asking for help initially, and the community responded so enormously that we en ended up saying, can you stop helping? <laughs> it's too much. Yeah. Because we couldn't deal with it. The charity agencies couldn't process the help that was flooding in. Mm. So when people need help, I think people actually love to give mm. and love to connect and love to do some, something for others. But the trouble is, I guess, with the social media, it's not real. Mm. And we just have to keep pointing that out. Mm. A, a big problem, I think, is people, they need a crisis to be kind of pushed into doing what you're saying. Yeah. And that's the problem, we get lazy. Even with friend, yeah. friends and family, yeah, you don't do. call people enough and just that little call to somebody out of the blue is enough to kind of brighten their day yeah. and we don't do that enough. And also, just compliment people. Mm. Actually give people it's some love. It's a lovely love. shirt, by the way. 
Thank you very much. <laughs> <laughs> I like your smile. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's great. It's true though. I feel better already. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. But mm. even smiling at people on the street. Yeah. What I've found being in London for the last week, um, I've been smiling at a lot of policemen. They're okay. good looking. Okay. But <laughs> Does that, that help? That obviously helps. <laughs> Apart from that, man in uniform. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> But I think they're doing an incredible job, mm. you know, and they're all lovely. Like I've had such a positive response because they're walking past looking very official and I'll go, morning, <laughs> and then I'll go, morning. <laughs> is, it, is it more friendly here than Australia? Uh, well, no, I, I wouldn't say that, but I think through this period it has been. I think, I think because you've got people from everywhere at the yeah, moment, yeah. you know, some of the police I've spoken to are Welsh police and mm. I've asked directions and they go, how would I know? I'm from Wales. <laughs> <laughs> and I think, um, but I've just found the community spirit of, around this whole event has just been beautiful. Mm, no, it has. I think it's like you say, bringing people together uh, and the important part of it as well is educating a lot of people and from different generations talking and communicating about what the royal family is and what it means. Yep. and the influence it's had. But it's, um, do you know what, it's been, it's been great talking to you. I think finally I want to just ask you as well, which I ask all my guests on the show, is what would you say that your purpose is in life? To contribute goodness. Mm. Even on a, a, a show that you're anchoring that gives out <laughs> a lot of depressive news and etc. But I think we can be alarmist or we can be um, balanced. Mm we can present it with heart and honesty and reality and kindness. So I hope that my optimism as a news presenter can shine through somehow. And I've been doing it for 40 years. Doesn't so look like it. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe it's working. No, oh, good. Well, that, you know, that's a great way to finish. And I think all those elements you, you, you spoke about there they push in and funnel into what we're trying to achieve with We Are Eight. So it's great to have you on board. Pleasure. Well, I, I, I think it's a fantastic concept and hope it goes really well. Mm -hmm.